Today I'm going to be responding to Ryan from Happy Healthy Vegan that made this video on me called Another Raw Vegan is No Longer Vegan. And I don't know why I said that because I haven't been vegan for over four years. So that is a load of misinformation in that title. So let's now get on to the video and I will respond when it is necessary as always. There is just so much of this cultish crap out there that is so much lies spread by vegans left, right and center and they just have these dogmatic approaches. I wish yep. I got on this diet way, way sooner and I'm having to deprogram all that vegan propaganda and ideologies and dogma. A vegan diet is destroying so many people's health. Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So I'm here today to respond to a set of videos put out by recent former vegan Danny Glass. And Danny, if you're watching, don't worry, I'm not here to rip you to shreds or destroy you or anything like that. And same for me making this response to you. You raised some interesting points that I thought were worthy of being responded to, so here I am. So with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. So I recently announced in a video after around six years, I am no longer vegan. So he said he's been vegan for six years and just recently started eating animal products again. And he said he made the switch because he was having some health issues and problems, which he said were due to being vegan. It's for almost three months now, I have been feeling the worst that I've pretty much ever felt in my life consistently. My energy levels have been very, very low. All right, so I'm not familiar with Danny's content, so I went to his YouTube channel to see what he was doing three months ago diet-wise, and here's what I found. But I am now on a 100% fruit diet, which... And when I made that video, I did it for a 30-day period. It's not exactly a long period of time. That didn't cause me the issues that made me end my vegan journey. To a lot of people, that's gonna sound quite crazy and extreme, but this isn't something that is new to me because I've become aware of this diet back in 2014. The reason why I'm on this diet, my body naturally wanted me to do it. So whenever I see someone recently quit being vegan and they were following a raw diet, some red flags go off, but you know, three months isn't really that long of a time, but I found out he had done it in the past for two years. And I followed it for around two years and guess what happened? I ran into so many micronutrient deficiencies. It messed up my testosterone production, my dopamine production. Well, yeah, I'm not a big fan, as most of you guys know, of fully raw or fruitarian diets. I do believe if you stay with them long term, you can get all sorts of health issues, as we've seen with many of these recent former vegans. Yes, and I would agree. And if you would actually done some further research, you would have found out, I found out what the deficiencies were, took the right supplements, stuck to more of a whole food, plant-based, vegan, diet for around four years. But then guess what? I then started to run into other deficiencies because this diet is a very malnourishing diet that lacks a lot of fat, soluble nutrients and various other micronutrients as well. However, Danny claims here he's had some deficiencies, some vitamin and micronutrient deficiencies from being a raw fruitarian, which might happen, testosterone as well, he said. However, I searched his channel to try to find some kind of blood test results video. I couldn't find one, so I'm kind of wondering if this is just self-diagnosed. Really, you gotta get a blood test. You just can't intuit, hmm, I think I'm a little low in thiamine. I got blood tests a very long time ago. I haven't actually got the results anymore, but I was like certain things, but guess what? You can't test for a lot of different micronutrients such as chromium, vanadium, and various other different ones. So there's not always a blood test available to actually get all the different nutrient levels checked to see what you're deficient in, and then you can go about supplementing with the specific nutrient to then correct it. But what I did find a whole bunch of on his YouTube channel was video after video after video after video talking about his experiences with fasting. And these videos go back for years and years. It's something he's been doing continuously, it looks like. And all aspects of fasting are discussed here, particularly intermittent fasting. It has tons of videos about intermittent fasting, weight loss and intermittent fasting, how to get shredded through fasting, water fasting. All right, so raw food sent red flags flags off of my mind and now fasting there's more red flags and this is funny this is what every vegan says about every ex-vegan that fails it's due to raw food and it's due to fasting and other extreme things that they do but guess what intermittent fasting has been done for hundreds and hundreds of years and extended fasting and if you look into dr jason fung you can do your research up online on him there's so much scientific research 
that he has done that he's shown that intermittent fasting can reverse type 2 diabetes and so many other health conditions and help boost testosterone production, lower insulin, boost human growth hormone, the list just goes on and on and on. I'm not going to show you any science, but you can go and look into that because I will be showing you so much research so long it's going to drag out the video too long. And I went to his Instagram and even more red flags when I saw a post like this talking about cupping to remove toxins and impurities from his body. So this bit is really, really funny. And what I'm going to show you is someone that is one of the best athletes in the world that is a huge advocate and person that uses cupping on a regular basis. Oh, and I forgot to mention the reason why Ryan doesn't believe in it is because there's pretty much no scientific research out there. But to be honest, this is not the thing that messed up my gut and my health to make me not thrive on a vegan diet. It was due to the diet is very malnourishing and it makes people deteriorate and I don't believe it's any diet that someone can thrive on because it lacks so many different micronutrients to be as healthy as possible. So I'm personally now having deja vu about the videos I made about Tim Sheaf who was into fasting and raw vegan diet. See, he likes to lump everyone that does these types of things in the same box. People that have done extreme things to mess it up so they can't thrive on a vegan diet. He doesn't do it, it's just like every single vegan that is like this YouTuber who makes YouTube videos who's a vegan that has got this vegan agenda to push, they all say the same thing and wanna blame the same reason for people failing on a vegan diet time and time again. And concerned about toxins and detoxification and the like. And yeah, Tim did other things that weren't particularly good for his health, such crazy stuff like drinking urine, which I'm glad Danny wasn't doing as far as I know. But yeah, others like Ravana, Raw Alignment, and others I made videos about have this fasting, um, purity, and raw vegan diet background. But guess what? There's so many vegans that haven't been thriving that have never done any of those things. Just like my girlfriend that I've been with for the last four months. She's never done any juice fasting, any long water fasting, no enemas, none of the stuff that you are mentioning that I did. And there's so many other vegans that have not done that as well and that have found they've had to go back to animal foods and it started resolving all of their health issues and symptoms in their history. So anyway, let's get to a vegan doctor who knows a little bit about this, Dr. Garth Davis, and here he talks about people such as all these that I've mentioned who get into veganism yet don't really eat quite enough food. I mean, what really surprises me is when people go to a vegan diet and then they still are portion controlling. They're hardly getting any calories and they feel like crap and they don't know why they feel like crap. We feel great because it's given us loads of essential fatty acids and other nutrients in it that are almost non-existent on a vegan diet or in very, very low amounts. So like I said, I wasn't under eating, so it's not about me getting more calories because I'm eating meat. It's giving me what I need to actually thrive and feel optimal. That's why, from my own experience, I actually got some results. It's not just me making it up in my head. It actually worked. But people like this doctor and Ryan, they tell you to eat a low-fat vegan diet and they expect you to get to all of the essential fatty acids, which on a, especially a low-fat vegan diet, good luck, you're never gonna get all of them. Oh my God, veganism killed me. Veganism didn't kill you. Your bad diet killed you. Yeah, the bad vegan diet that so many people fail on time and time again because it's not a nourishing diet. It's just so, I don't know, blatantly obvious to me. Now, the science behind whether a plant-based diet's gonna kill you is just, I mean, it's just preposterous to you. The science, the science, because the science says it's so good for you, it means it must work for everyone. It's like, come on, you can always find science that says one thing and then another bit of science that says another thing. Even suggest that it would. It's the healthiest diet you could do. Again, that's Dr. Davis, who eats a very sensible and balanced vegan diet, such as I do, and he's still vegan. He's not having all these weird energy, sex drive, hormone problems. And I did for the last four years, eat what you call a sensible, mostly whole food, plant-based vegan diet. And I ate sufficient calories, and I made sure I did the best that I could do with it. But Danny firmly believes that long-term vegans like me and Angie and Dr. Garth Davis should be falling apart. The diet works for them early on, and I've noticed this time and time again, most vegans thrive for around a year or so, 
And then they start to go downhill and then they start to blame like stress or lack of sleep or exercising too much or some other things. They just become very in denial that it's the diet that is affecting them in a negative way. So you guys know I'm not a medical doctor, but we've seen people like say Tim Sheaf, Ravana, Raw Alignment, you know, people who had long stints as raw, at raw veganism and combine that with fasting, developed gut issues. We're talking about like SIBO and IBS. So there's a pretty good chance that Danny might have something like that and Danny if you're watching have you seen a doctor yet if not I urge you to just go visit a gastroenterologist as soon as you can and see what's been going on with your gut why would I do that when I've just switched back to grass-fed meats and grass-fed butter and other animal foods which a lot of these we would have been eating in a natural environment when we was in a tribal setting that we've been eating for around 1.9 million years if you do your research into this it's like why am I going to try and fix my gut when the diet is the issue and it's like not designed for us to thrive on? And if you look at people in the blue zones, guess what? They are predominant plant-based diet, but they also eat a lot of animal foods and they're the longest living people in the world. I know no better gastroenterologist than Dr. Angie. Yeah, she's here in California. It might be a little hard for you to come out and visit her. And we were fortunate enough to see her speak at SoCal Veg Fest a few weeks ago about this very talk topic about vegan YouTubers and Instagrammers who ate in these kind of extreme ways, developed health issues, and quit being vegan and blamed veganism on. And it's also happened to loads of people that aren't Instagram influencers and YouTubers as well, time and time again. So let's continue. On it incorrectly. You guys, be careful who you follow on Instagram. There are a lot of Instagram models who go on three month fasts, like unhealthy fasts. We know that malnutrition is one of the leading causes of SIBO and IBS and gut problems like dysmotility. They do frequent fasting, like 30 day water fast, and they're already malnutrition, BMI of 17 and if you're hearing these Instagrammers who are models they come out and say veganism caused this be careful because just because they have a problem doesn't mean veganism caused it there are a thousand other things that and as you could probably tell there Dr. Angie is a vegan and she also eats a balanced sensible non-extreme vegan diet and her health isn't going downhill as well most vegans fry for around a year or so and then they start to go downhill. I'm totally wondering where Danny got that statistic from because it sounds like he's either making it up or my guess is he's probably projecting from his own personal experience. What I should have actually said or what would have been better to say was I normally see people that start to deteriorate around the one to three year period. And what I'm basing this on is the amount of people that I've known in my real life experience and online that tend to say this time range time and time again, and this happened for me and so many people that I've listened to. I don't need any science to prove this. And he talks about fasting and she said about 30 day fasting. Yes, I've done lots of fasting, but i the like last six years, I've never done a fast longer than 24 hours. It's like, oh my God, it's really going to cause some damage. I didn't do any of these long ones like Tim Sheaf. I mean, in my case, I've been vegan far longer than he has. I've been vegan nine years and I'm Woo, 15 years you. old. And far from falling apart, I'm more athletic now than ever. I'm playing some of the best basketball of my life. And he looks like he's a skinny, weak, frail vegan. Look at him. He's not someone that I'd look at and go, oh my God, he looks like he's so strong and vital. It makes you want to get on the vegan movement. Not at all. And I'm even easily putting on... Definitely looks protein deficient. Strength now that I'm actually but apparently he's putting to. strength on. So in one of Danny's videos, <laughs> he argues that we need to consume dietary cholesterol in order to have proper levels of sex hormones. When you consume dietary cholesterol, and also when your body produces its own cholesterol, which it does, it will turn it into pregnenolone. This is absolutely true and this is based on science. Which is a specific hormone that then turns into things such as testosterone, estrogen. Vegans say, well, you don't need it because your body produces enough. But what happens on a vegan diet after a long period of time, as so many vegans can show you through their blood results, and I can show you in my blood results here, which they are very, very low, 
So again, I'm not a medical doctor, but I've done enough blood tests here, put them up on YouTube for you all to see that I know a little bit about LDL cholesterol well, readings. Now. And I know for a fact, 124 is not low. In fact, any lab I've seen in the United States states that you should be under 100. I'm not sure why in Thailand it says under, under 150, but. And guess why that happens in America? If you do your research, into statins of this specific statin drug called Lipitor. It is one of the biggest selling pharmaceuticals in the world, which in 2018, it generated 2.1 billion US dollars. And I remember coaching someone that worked in a lab and did tests for people with cholesterol. And he said over the years, he noticed that they put the reference range down in America more and more and more every few years so then they can maximize their profits it's very very clever marketing strategy but he has actually a slightly elevated ldl cholesterol levels and he's right about his hdl his good cholesterol that is indeed a little low you get your cholesterol levels down really low due to not having dietary cholesterol but they go down so low over a period of time and not having dietary cholesterol that your body is not getting enough cholesterol to produce an abundance of all these different amazing hormones that I mentioned that was in that chart. So then what happens, and this is why so many vegans long term are going back to animal foods, it completely messes up your hormone production and then you feel like crap mentally and physically. All right, so I will agree that a vegan diet, a sensible balanced vegan diet has affected my testosterone level, which is really important because I'm age 52. I should have really low testosterone because our production drops off as we age. But if you look at my test that I got done 11 months ago, I'm sorry if you've seen this time and time again, but my level is 744, which is off the charts for a man my age. And it's actually really high for a man in his testosterone producing prime years of late 20s to 30 years old. And again, I'm not some kind of odd freak. This is quite normal for men who follow plant-based diets. And he has adequate amounts of testosterone, but also I had adequate amounts of testosterone. As you can see here, 781 nanograms per deciliter and also free testosterone 10.10 .10 nanograms per deciliter, which is really high for my age as well. But if you look at my SHBG is 67.36, which is what around a hundred year old person would normally be seen to have. So that is not a good thing whatsoever. And that is definitely something that was caused on a vegan diet. But guess how I got up my testosterone levels? By taking all the different supplements like zinc and various other nutrients that are proven to be low on a vegan diet that then massively boosted my testosterone levels. So it wasn't due to the vegan diet at all, it was due to the supplementation. And who knows, maybe Ryan's doing the same as well. If you take men on a high protein diet, meat, fish, poultry, egg whites, and switch them to a high carb diet of uh, bread, vegetables, fruit, and sugary junk, their cortisol levels drop about a quarter within 10 days. At the same time, their testosterone levels shoot up by about the same amount. High protein diets suppress testosterone. And that was Dr. Greger of nutritionfacts.org, who also follows a balanced, sensible, vegan, whole food, plant-based diet. And this vegan and doctor tends to cherry pick a lot of information. So let's look in to some research and see if a high protein diet does actually suppress testosterone production. If we look at this article, which I put a link down below for, I'm not obviously gonna read it all out, but I'll just read a couple of parts. But it goes on to show now in this study, we have more data as they also measured SHBG and it showed that a lower protein, high carbohydrate diet raised both total testosterone and SHBG. And guess what SHBG does? It binds to free testosterone, so then it cannot be used to increase your total testosterone levels. And then the conclusion was, from the available data, it is impossible to conclude that a higher protein diet reduces bioavailable testosterone levels. In addition, it is simply ludicrous to suggest that a higher protein intake will hinder muscle gains based on both human and mechanistic evidence. Besides promoting an increase in lean mass under a calorie a deficit combined with resistant exercise, a higher protein intake promotes lean mass gains even without resistance exercise under overfeeding conditions compared to the lower protein intakes. And this is all based on scientific research. So again, Ryan is just cherry picking when there's information to show what he's saying is untrue.
tricked. And yeah, no wonder why so many of them look malnourished. They're not getting the cholesterol, and then they're not getting certain other nutrients that are really hard to get on this diet. Danny yeah. knows quite well that our bodies produce cholesterol naturally. And on my last yeah. blood test earlier this year, 2019, as always, I had nice healthy levels of HDL, good cholesterol, and my good LDL, like Danny's, was a little bit above the reference range and was 104. But the hard truth is that meat is high in saturated fat and cholesterol, and saturated fat and cholesterol raise your serum cholesterol score, and elevated serum cholesterol levels are without doubt the number one risk factor for heart disease. So if we look at this article, it's talking about mortality rate and how people that actually have higher cholesterols actually live longer. So it goes on to talk about population studies in Japan showed that people of all ages with higher cholesterol live longer. There is the study linked here so you can look into that further. What about outside Japan? The following chart shows cumulative all-cause mortality of people older than 85 in Linden, the Netherlands by cholesterol level and it shows you this chart here. The cohort with an average cholesterol of 252 milligrams per deciliter which according to Ryan is really really high and dangerous for you the highest had the lowest death rates. And the following shows data from elderly people in Finland, those with cholesterol greater than 232 milligrams per deciliter had the lowest death rates as well. Hmm. So it seems it's actually good if you wanna maximize your longevity. Just adds on this, I'm not gonna read it without, you can pause and read it all if you really want to, but there was one study where over 52,000 Norwegians, researchers found that women with total cholesterol levels below 195 milligrams per deciliter had a higher risk of death than women with cholesterol levels above that cutoff. And then there's loads of different scientific studies that are summarized here, which you can pause on now and read them further if you want to. I recommend, if you wanna learn more of this from someone that's actually got a PhD and another person that's an MD, I recommend getting the Great Cholesterol Myth books that debunks all of this propaganda that vegans spread around cholesterol and it being bad for you. There'll be links down below for this book in case you're interested in it. They say, well, meat is carcinogenic. Well, if it's processed garbage meat, then it's gonna be carcinogenic for you. So I believe what he's referring to here is how the World Health Organization, a group of scientists, not a vegan organization, classified red meat as a group 2A. That's a probable carcinogen. But if you're getting it from the cleaning sources such as pasture-raised, grass-fed, organic, free-range, antibiotic-free, and so on, then it will give you amazing health-promoting benefits like it has for me. No, that's not true at all. There's no science whatsoever that shows if you get your meat from the cleanest sources, organic as possible, grass-fed and all that, that the carcinogenic properties of meat somehow suddenly cease to be. Might want to wish for that to happen, but until there's some solid science showing that, you can't really make that claim. And Chris Cresser has this amazing article, which I'll link down below because it's a very long article. I'll read out a little bit about it, but he is debunking a lot of the sciences out there saying red meat is not good for us. And he makes one good example here. The association between red meat and cancer is not strong and in fact is often not distinguishable from chance. If red meat really did cause cancer, you'd expect to see a linear increase in cancer rates as red meat consumption increased. But that's not what we see in many cases. In fact, in some studies, you actually see a decrease in cancer rate in people that eat the most red meat. And you can click this for the citation that is on the NCBI website to prove this. I also said that grass-fed beef is way healthier for you. And if you look at this chart, added hormones is not in grass-fed beef. No, antibiotics is not fed grains. It has a way better omega-3 to 6 ratio, way a higher content of CLA way more beta carotene, vitamin E, vitamin A. It's got the perfect balance of total fat. It tastes better and you're not going to have any risk of E. coli with it, unlike factory farm meat. And I also made the claim that it's health promoting and like I showed you with grass fed compared to grain fed meat, it's way more nutrient dense. And guess what? Those nutrients give people amazing health benefits. And that's why when they switch from a malnourishing vegan diet to eating these high quality meats, all their head issues and symptoms finally start to go away because they're getting what they've been lacking for so long. I also want to point out that the American Dietetics Association, after reviewing the scientific literature, concluded that appropriately planned, I want to highlight that, appropriately planned vegan diets are safe, healthful, and adequate for people. It says actually may provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases, which could be a lot of issues that vegans have run into, and it may resolve it. They don't say it will 
resolve it in all phases of life so this assertion of Danny's that vegan diets are inherently unhealthful is not scientifically justified so I want to be painfully clear here I'm not denying in any way that Danny's being untruthful about these health issues that he experienced while vegan I completely believe him from what I've seen from Tim and Ravana and the others yes extended stints as raw vegans combined with fasting a pursuit of pursuit of purity i've seen leads people to develop issues in their gut but what about all of the vegans that weren't doing that and it made them not thrive at all and it made them deteriorate massively which leads them to stop being vegan eventually which is why i tell people if you're a raw vegan you might really think that because the odds are you might not actually be any sort of vegan in a couple years down the road so that's why i recommend that people eat a balanced sensible whole food plant-based diet it might it's funny how i keep saying balanced sensible it'd be too late in these people's cases because they've already developed gut issues, which is why I recommend seeing a gastroenterologist. And from the little bit I know about SIBO, it can be typically cured fairly easily with a few rounds of antibiotics. Are you actually joking me? I don't know how Ryan can say that. He's not a doctor, so he doesn't necessarily know that. But if we look at this medical website that has loads of patients that had SIBO or still have it going on that took antibiotics, and if you read through these time and time again, I'm just going to read out one. So many of them said the symptoms went into remission and then it came back. It did not eliminate it. This person took a specific antibiotic, which they're warning people against. They took it in 2010, less than two weeks. And while taking it, they ended up with C. diff. If you don't know what C. diff is, it is a common infection of the colon that is typically associated with the use of antibiotics. You've already got some gut issues going on and then you're going to make it even worse. It's a really bad thing. Antibiotics mean anti-life. They don't just kill off the good bacteria, they also kill off the bad bacteria, which is a huge reason why so many people have so many gut issues in the first place. And then she goes on to say that particular bacteria has killed many patients, particularly the elderly. Go the natural route and diet which i would agree with so this is another article based on science it says why your gut microbiome loves intermittent fasting why i'm getting onto this he keeps mentioning the fasting time and time again and say it has a negative effect on your gut health but if you read here we're just starting to understand how intermittent fasting may impact gut health and microbiomes and how this may in turn explain some of the health benefits of going without calories for extended periods of time on a regular basis Scientific research, mostly in animal models, is revealing that intermittent fasting may restore microbiome diversity in the gut, increase total tolerance against bad gut microbes, and restore the integrity of the intestinal epithelium. And one study in 2014 found that intermittent fasting helped salmonella-infected mice clear the pathogen bacteria more quickly through a heightened immune response, prevented the bacteria from crossing out of the gut and resulted in elevated levels of IgA, an antibody or protein that boosts the integrity and immune function of mucous membranes like those lining the intestine. So it can actually help, as shown through scientific research, to actually improve your overall gut health, which could result in you eliminating SIBO or massively reducing the overgrowth of this bacteria within the small intestines. And I think that's worth a go. If you really believe in the vegan ideals of... I think you mean ideologies and dogma that the vegans just spread left, right and center. Not harming animals, not killing animals in order for you to live, not destroying the environment, need Ah, actually, if you're buying high quality pasture raised meats, you're not destroying the environment. As you'll see here, the people say in the vegan diet, the vegan diet is better for the environment. But as it says here, yes, animal based agriculture produces 4% of green gases, but plant based agriculture generates even more. Plant based agriculture generates around 5% of greenhouse emissions which again is based on science and if you go down here they show you this little image studies show that local raised cattle can pull carbon out of the atmosphere show me fake meat that can do that like the beyond burger and the impossible burger and it shows you the chart here that is a lot bigger for you to understand and when you actually take all these things into consideration with what she just mentioned it comes to a minus 3.5 net total of greenhouse emissions from cows and the methane that they produce unlike things like this fake meat burger called the beyond burger and they keep saying a sensible whole foods diet that's really healthy yet 
They're promoting this really toxic Beyond Burger. And let's see what they have to say about it. Of course, we're gonna be some of the first people to try them. Yeah, I bet you're gonna be some of the first people to try it. Ryan and I have talked about Ethan Brown and Beyond Meat quite a few times in the show, but we really stand behind what they're for. They're in it for all the right reasons. And, and a lot of these reasons are just complete propaganda as I have just shown you with some scientific based evidence. And if you go and look into who is funding these companies, people like Bill Gates, Tyson Foods, which is the biggest meat company in the world, the Humane Society, a lot of people that do a lot of really bad things in the world. And guess what? They're only doing it because they care about making money. It's not about the environment or the health or the animals not being harmed. And yeah, look into the Beyond Meat Burger. Meat substitute company more than triple sales from the same quarter a year ago and produces 4.1 million in gap profit. So loads of money to be made. And then if you look at the ingredients, these pea protein isolate, expeller, pressed canola or refined coconut or water, yeast extract, multi dextrin, which those things can feed SIBO and cause gut issues. Then there's refined salt, succinic acid, acetic acid, non-GMO modified food, starch, the list just goes on and on and on. This is just complete vegan garbage and slop that is just not healthy for us whatsoever. Yet they are promoting this very, very unhealthy burger that I'd not recommend to anyone. And guess what? Ryan is eating it as well, not just his lovely wife. The concept is gross, but no, this is really cool. I guess it's really cool. Yeah, just give us a real meat burger that hasn't got that crap in it. That is some grass fed beef burger that's actually really healthy for us. Unlike what you believe, because you believe any animal foods are not good for you, no matter what source they come from. Needlessly for meat, I would suggest looking into visiting a medical doctor and getting yourself checked out. Takes a <gasps> oh, medical doctor, seriously. So many medical doctors are so sick, and they are just wanting to push certain things for you to buy to make a lot of money. Antibiotics, if that's what they prescribe, <laughs> you get back to a vegan diet, a sensible, healthy vegan diet, maybe for the first time ever in your guys' life. So if a sensible vegan diet is so good for so many people, how come so many people actually go back to eating animal foods as this study found? There was a large study of American dietary habits. They found that 84% of vegetarians and vegans eventually go back to eating meat. If a sensible vegan diet is so good, how come so many people fail as this study found? Which the finding was, in this large study of American dietary habits, 84% of vegetarians and vegans eventually go back to eating meat. So maybe the diet's not as good as Ryan actually believes within himself. So again, this is no hate to anyone. I have compassion for what you're going through and hopefully you might try it out again in this way. So many guys. Ha! <laughs> no way would I try it again. You've got to be absolutely out of your mind. And guess what? So many ex-vegans aren't going to do it as well because they've woken up to the truth that it is not a sustainable diet. Unlike what a lot of you vegans believe. Leave your questions and comments down below. Hit like, share this video, and until next time guys, remember, let's vote vegan. Yes, I'm running for city council in Long Beach, District 2. If you live in Long Beach, you can vote for me next year in March. And if you live anywhere in the United States, you can contribute to my campaign. Please, everyone, go check out my website, ryanlum.net. And I did some further research into this, and one of the things he said he wants to do, if he actually gets voted in, is he wants to get rid of the only slaughterhouse in Long Beach, which... It, that just seems really stupid to me. So if you actually get rid of it, guess what's gonna happen? Not everyone's gonna go vegan in the area due to that guy. So then they're gonna have to import more meat from outside of that area, which then is more damaging to the environment as a whole. So that is just absolute stupidity. So that is the end of the video. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis. So as always, catch you on the flip side. Peace.